Picture this, over 100 million gallons of water rushing into a massive concrete canyon, slowly lifting a 100,000 ton floating fortress back to life. The USS John C. Stennis, one of America's most powerful warships, emerges from three years in the world's largest dry dock like a sleeping giant awakening. But this isn't just any repair job, this is a complete rebirth that cost $3 billion and took 25 million man hours to complete. On April 8, 2024, history was made at Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia when this nuclear-powered beast rolled out of dry dock, transformed into what Navy officials are calling the most technologically advanced Nimitz-class aircraft carrier in the Navy. But here's what makes this story even more incredible. While America celebrates this engineering triumph, the Navy is facing its biggest shipyard crisis in decades. Four critical dry docks have been shut down due to earthquake risks, creating a maintenance nightmare that's putting our entire carrier fleet at risk. The USS Ronald Reagan just entered a 17-month overhaul in March 2025, and with the USS Nimitz retiring in May 2026, America's carrier fleet is about to drop to just 10 ships for nearly a full year. This is the untold story of how America's naval supremacy hangs in the balance, and why what happened in that Virginia dry dock could determine the future of our military dominance on the seas. Before we dive deeper into this incredible story of American naval power, if you're proud of our Navy and the incredible work they do to keep America safe, type PROUD in the comments below. Your support means everything to these brave men and women serving our nation. The Stennis Transformation The USS John C. Stennis isn't just any aircraft carrier. She's a floating city that houses 5,000 sailors and carries enough firepower to level entire regions. Commissioned back in December 1995, this Nimitz-class supercarrier has been the backbone of American naval power for nearly three decades, but by 2021, after countless deployments protecting American interests around the globe, the Stennis needed what the Navy calls an RCOH, a refueling and complex overhaul. Think of it as open heart surgery for a giant. The ship's two nuclear reactors needed fresh fuel, and every single system required updating with the latest technology. When the Stennis entered the massive dry dock at HII Newport News Shipbuilding in May 2021, she was about to undergo the most comprehensive transformation possible. This wasn't just maintenance, this was a complete rebirth that would give her another 25 years of service life. The scale of this operation is mind-boggling. Workers had to preserve and replace thousands of valves, pumps, and piping components. They completely rebuilt the ship's island structure, installed a brand new square and tapered mast, and upgraded every single aircraft launch and recovery system. The propeller shafts were restored, new refurbished propellers installed, and the entire hull received a fresh coat of specialized paint. But here's what makes this even more impressive. They did all of this while the ship was sitting in a concrete dry dock that had been completely drained of water. Imagine trying to perform surgery on a patient the size of a skyscraper while they're lying in a concrete pit 50 feet below sea level. The Dramatic Rollout April 8, 2024 was a day that will go down in naval history. After nearly three years of intensive work, it was time for the USS John C. Stennis to return to her natural element, the water. The process of floating a 100-000-ton aircraft carrier is nothing short of spectacular. Newport News shipbuilding began flooding dry dock with over 100 million gallons of water. That's enough water to fill 150 Olympic-sized swimming pools, all rushing in to lift this engineering marvel back to life. As the water level rose, something magical happened. The massive steel hull that had been sitting on concrete blocks for three years began to float. Slowly, gracefully, the USS John C. Stennis rose like a phoenix from the ashes, ready to reclaim her place as one of America's most formidable weapons. Rear Admiral Casey Moten, who oversees all aircraft carrier programs, watched this historic moment with pride. He knew that when the Stennis emerged from that dry dock, she wasn't just the same ship that went in three years earlier. She was now 
the most technologically advanced Nimitz-class aircraft carrier in the Navy. The ship was then carefully moved to the shipyard's outfitting berth, where the final phase of her transformation would take place. Here, shipyard workers and the ship's crew would complete the installation and testing of all major components and combat support systems. But what happened next would test everything they had worked for over the past three years. The massive scale of modern carriers. To truly understand what America accomplished with the Stennis overhaul, you need to grasp the sheer scale of these floating fortresses. The USS John C. Stennis stretches over 1,000 feet long. That's longer than three football fields placed end to end. Her flight deck alone covers 4.5 acres, enough space to accommodate more than 70 aircraft, including FA-18 Super Hornets, EA-18G Growlers, and E-2C Hawkeyes. The carrier's two nuclear reactors provide virtually unlimited range and endurance with enough power to supply electricity to a city of 100,000 people. These reactors can run for 25 years without refueling, which is exactly why the RCOH process is so critical and so expensive. During her overhaul, the Stennis received upgrades that would make science fiction writers jealous. New defense and communication systems that can track and engage multiple threats simultaneously. Modernized aircraft launch and recovery equipment that can catapult a 30-ton fighter jet from 0 to 165 miles per hour in just 3 seconds. The living quarters were completely renovated too, because when you're asking 5,000 sailors to spend months at sea defending America, they deserve the best possible living conditions. New crew living spaces, updated galleys where they prepare thousands of meals daily, and improved mess decks where these heroes can relax during their precious off-duty hours. What's truly remarkable is that all of this complexity was rebuilt while maintaining the ship's combat readiness standards. Every system had to meet or exceed its original specifications because when this carrier returns to active duty, American lives will depend on her performance. The Shipyard Crisis, Threatening America. But while we celebrate the success of the Stennis overhaul, a darker story is unfolding that threatens America's naval supremacy. In early 2024, the Navy was forced to make a devastating decision that went largely unnoticed by the American public but sent shockwaves through naval leadership. Four critical dry docks were suddenly shut down due to earthquake safety concerns. Three dry docks at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard in Washington and another at the nearby Trident Refit Facility in Bangor were deemed too dangerous to operate. Navy engineers discovered that the ground beneath one dry dock could literally turn to liquid during a significant earthquake, potentially swallowing an entire aircraft carrier. This crisis couldn't have come at a worse time. Currently, 36% of the Navy's attack submarine fleet is either in maintenance or waiting for maintenance. With four dry docks now offline, these numbers are getting worse every day. The impact on aircraft carriers is even more severe. Dry dock number six at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard was the only dry dock on the entire West Coast certified for nuclear aircraft carriers. With its closure, any carrier needing major repairs must now travel all the way to the East Coast, adding months to maintenance schedules and straining an already overwhelmed system. Meanwhile, the USS Ronald Reagan entered her own major overhaul in March 2025 at the remaining facilities in Bremerton, Washington. This 17-month maintenance period will keep one of our most capable carriers out of action while tensions continue to rise in the Pacific. The timing is particularly concerning given China's rapid naval expansion and increasing aggression in the South China Sea. When America needs its carriers most, the infrastructure to maintain them is literally crumbling beneath our feet. The Ford-class struggles. While the Stennis represents a triumph of naval engineering, the story of America's newest carriers reveals a troubling pattern of delays and cost overruns that's putting our naval future at risk. The USS Gerald R. Ford, the lead ship of the Navy's next generation carrier class, was supposed to revolutionize naval aviation. With electromagnetic catapults instead of steam, advanced arresting gear, and weapons elevators that move ordnance at unprecedented speeds, the Ford promised to launch 33% more aircraft than the Nimitz-class carriers. But the road to deployment was anything but smooth. Originally scheduled for delivery in 2015, the Ford didn't reach the fleet until 2017, and even then, many of her advanced systems weren't working properly. 
The electromagnetic aircraft launch system faced reliability issues, and the advanced weapons elevators became a nightmare of delays and cost overruns. The Ford finally completed her maiden deployment in January 2024, but not before her deployment was extended three times due to the crisis in the Middle East following the October 7th attacks in Israel. When she finally returned to Norfolk in January 2024, she had proven her worth in combat operations, but at tremendous cost in time and resources. Now the second Ford-class carrier, the USS John F. Kennedy, is facing even worse delays. Originally scheduled for delivery in July 2025, the Kennedy won't join the fleet until March 2027, a devastating two-year delay that will leave America with just 10 operational carriers for nearly a full year. The Kennedy's delays stem from the same advanced systems that plagued the Ford. The advanced arresting gear and advanced weapons elevators continue to present challenges that shipbuilders are struggling to overcome. Newport News Shipbuilding admits that many lessons learned from the Ford came too late to be incorporated into the Kennedy's construction. America's Carrier Dominance at Stake These delays and infrastructure challenges come at a time when America's carrier dominance faces unprecedented threats. China now operates the world's largest navy with more than 370 ships and submarines, and they're rapidly building new carriers of their own. While their current carriers are conventionally powered, intelligence reports suggest they're working on nuclear propulsion systems that could rival American capabilities. Congress has mandated that the Navy maintain not less than 11 operational aircraft carriers, but with the Nimitz retiring in May 2026 and the Kennedy delayed until 2027, the Navy will violate this requirement for the first time in decades. The operational impact extends far beyond numbers. East Coast carriers have borne the brunt of Middle East deployments since the Hamas attacks began in 2023. The USS Harry S. Truman and USS Dwight D. Eisenhower spent months in the Red Sea and Eastern Mediterranean, firing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of missiles to defend against Iranian-backed Houthi attacks. This intense operational tempo is wearing out both ships and crews at an alarming rate. The Eisenhower alone fired over 200 missiles and more than 150 artillery round expenditures comparable to World War II battle levels. When carriers are spending months in combat operations instead of planned training cycles, the entire fleet suffers. The USS Gerald R. Ford recently deployed again in June 2025, but instead of heading directly to the Mediterranean as originally planned, she's been equipped with new anti-drone weapons, specifically designed to counter the cheap Iranian drones that have been terrorizing commercial shipping in the Red Sea. The Road Ahead Despite these challenges, American naval power remains unmatched, and the success of the USS John C. Stennis overhaul proves that our shipbuilders and sailors can overcome any obstacle. The Stennis will return to active duty in October 2026 as the most capable Nimitz-class carrier ever built, ready to serve for another 25 years. The Navy is learning from every setback and applying those lessons to future projects. The next Ford-class carriers, the USS Enterprise and USS Doris Miller, are being built with all the lessons learned from their predecessors. Construction techniques are improving, and the industrial base is slowly adapting to post-pandemic realities. New dry dock facilities are being planned and existing ones upgraded to handle the demands of 21 St. Century Naval Warfare. The Navy's Shipyard Infrastructure Optimization Plan represents a $21 billion commitment to rebuilding America's naval infrastructure for the next generation of threats. Most importantly, the men and women who operate these incredible machines continue to demonstrate the courage, skill, and dedication that makes the U.S. Navy the finest fighting force the world has ever seen. From the shipyard workers who spent three years rebuilding the Stennis to the sailors who will take her back to sea, American naval excellence remains our greatest strategic advantage. Conclusion The story of how America rolls out gigantic aircraft carriers from the world's largest dry docks is ultimately a story of American determination and engineering excellence. When the USS John C. Stennis emerged from that Virginia dry dock in April 2024, she represented more than just a successful repair job. She embodied America's commitment to maintaining peace through strength on the world's oceans. 
If this incredible display of American naval power inspired you, please give this video a like and subscribe for more stories of military excellence. Our sailors deserve to have their stories told, and your support helps us continue bringing you these amazing tales of American heroism and ingenuity.